All right. Peace and love and Islam to everyone on the chat. My name is Hassan Amari Bey. Uh, I wanted to bring forth to your attention <clears throat> holistic uh, products that you can use, you know what I'm saying, um, in your everyday life, you know, as we strive to get back to the ancient ways and the ancient ways of thinking. Um, these holistic practices that I'm about to expose to you, some new age, but some are old school, you know, and some are just uh, bring forth to your attention how deep it is and how we really have to pay attention to everything as far as what we put on our body, as far as what we put in our body. So <clears throat> with that being said, <clears throat> the first piece of documentation that I would like to share with y'all is Dr. Sabi's Cell Food Nutritional Guide. So if y'all got a pen and a paper, I will gladly read for <clears throat> read for you a list of fruits, vegetables, herbal teas, nuts and seeds, and oils that is very, very, very good for our health instead of using the commercially bought things that we buy in the supermarket, that people buy in the supermarkets and things of that nature. So vegetables. So we have wild arugula, avocado, bell peppers, coyote, which is Mexican squash, cucumber, dandelion greens, garbanzo beans, cactus flower or cactus leaf, kale, lettuce, all except iceberg. All lettuce are good except iceberg, okay? Mushrooms, all except shiitake mushrooms. Stay away from the shiitake mushrooms, according to the prophet. Um, Naples, which is Mexican cactus, okra, olives, onions, sea vegetables, squash, tomato, cherry, and plum only. That's a big thing. You know, a lot of us eat sub sandwiches and things of that nature. They use the big, the bigger, the bigger tomatoes. Dr. Sebi said the more whole, the more natural ones that's of the earth, not the mutated ones, are the cherry and the plum tomato only. You have tomillos, you have turnip greens, zucchini, watercress, and that's lit it for the vegetables. So now we're going on to the fruits. You have apples, bananas, the smallest one or the burrow banana. The original banana is the burrow banana. I want y'all to understand that those bananas that you see in the supermarket is not the ones we're supposed to be eating. Our fruits are supposed to bear seeds. That's how you know it's up to earth. It's original. You understand what I'm saying? So the barrel banana, you'll usually find those in like an international market. You're not going to go in like Food Line or Kroger or one of your little, you know, major grocery chains and find this type, these type of things that I'm reading off to y'all. So I hope that y'all are taking notes or whatever, um, <clears throat> because I'm trying to read as slowly as possible so you can take notes as I go. So we are on to the fruits list now. So we have apples, bananas, burrow. Berries, all variety, elderberries in any form. Now, here it is, no cranberries. So if you're drinking cranberry juice, leave it alone. It's very toxic to you. Cantaloupe, cherries, curants, which I'm not very familiar with that fruit, but this is on the list. If y'all are, then you understand what I'm saying. Dates, figs, grapes, only seeded grapes. Limes, key limes, preferred with seeds. Remember that a lot of us get the big limes that's the same size as the lemon, that's a hybrid. The key lime, the little small one, those are the real ones. Mango, melons, seeded. Orange, Seville or sour preferred. Now listen, I'm going to tell y'all, that sour orange tastes just like a lemon. It's disgusting. It's hideous, but it's good for you. You understand? Papayas. Peaches, pears, plums, prickly pear, cactus fruit, prunes, raisins seeded, soft jelly coconuts, soursop, Latin or West Indian markets, like I told you, and tamarinds. That's it for the fruit list. Now, does anyone need me to read the vegetable list again? I guess something that they may be interested in writing down on the fruits list before I continue on. Yeah, let's do the uh, the vegetable demonstration one more time. Of uh, Benjamin Bay just chimed in. Okay, 
So we're going to go back to the vegetable list. Wild arugula, avocado, bell pepper, coyote, which is Mexican squash, cucumber, dandelion greens, garbanzo beans, isote dash cactus flower forward slash cactus leaf, kale, lettuce, all except iceberg lettuce. Stay away from iceberg lettuce. Mushrooms, all except shiitake. Stay away from shiitake mushrooms. No pills on, yeah, no, no pales, if I'm saying that correctly, N-O-P-A-L-E-S, no pales, I guess, no, it's like you probably got a Spanish twin to it or whatever, that's the Mexican cactus, okra, olives, onions, sea vegetables, squash, tomato, just a cherry and a plum tomato, tomillos, I mean, ta tomatillo, I mean, I apologize, tomatillo, turnip greens, zucchini, watercress, and purslane. <clears throat> That's it for the uh, vegetable list. So we already did the fruits, Do We need to go back over the fruits so we can go back. We're going to go to the teas now. Y'all good with the fruits and the vegetables? All right, cool. So we're going yeah. to the teas now. So all natural herbal teas. Burdock, chamomile, elderberry, fennel, flor de, man, flor de mantia, ginger, gordo lobo, musil, raspberry, and tilla. Those are the herbal teas suggested by Dr. Sade. Now on to your grains. Armorath, if I'm pronouncing arm. Yeah, if my pronouncing ever Armoranth, Fonio, Camut, Quinoa, Rye, Spelt, Teff, and Wild Rice. These are the grains that we are supposed to be ingesting that will keep us healthy and keep us looking good as far as Dr. Sabi is concerned. Now, nuts and seeds, including nut and seed butters. You only have a few. Hemp seed. Raw sesame seeds, raw sesame tahini butter, walnuts, which is the original nut of them all that are out there, and Brazilian nuts. Last but not least, we have oils. Olive oil, do not cook. So that means you're using this olive oil to like make maybe a dressing or a marinade or something like that, or whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? A sauce or something you're putting over top of your greens, your vegetables, or whatever you choose to eat. Coconut oil, do not cook. Grape seed oil, which is fine to cook and heat. Sesame oil, hemp seed oil, and avocado oils. Everybody following that so far? All right, so I'm going to move on. Spices and seasonings. Mild flavors, we have basil, bay leaf, cloves, dill, oregano, savory, sweet basil, tarragon, and thyme. Pungent and spicy flavors. Achio, cayenne, African bird pepper, which is African bird pepper, onion, habanero, and sage. <clears throat> Salty flavors. We have pure sea salt, powdered granulated seaweed, kelp dulce nore, either or. Sweet flavors. You have pure agave syrup from cactus and date sugar. So... If y'all want to take a screenshot of that, I can hold it up or whatever. And you can take a screenshot of that. If you didn't write anything down, you need to write anything else down. Um, this is Dr. Savy Cell Food Nutritional Guide. You might be able to pull it up online <clears throat> and get you one if you have not um, subscribed to their things that they have online or whatever. So that concludes that part of... Uh, that cell food situation. Um, any questions about that or 
anything before I move forward, forward, I'll be able to answer it to the best of my knowledge and ability. I want to say I like how you distinguish the lines because the small ones and the big ones, you know, the, the, the big ones more hybrid and it's a sign that it's a no go. So I like that. That was big for me. Okay. 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 So, um, the next thing I want to say is we have to remember this is the most important rule when it comes to our body. You know what I'm saying? Never put nothing on your body that you cannot consume. If you cannot eat it, you do not put it on your body. By no means necessary, by any means necessary. I know we've been taught, mama used to put Vaseline on our face, all that stuff like that, you know? But those type of things we need to stay away from and stay on the holistic side of things. This is keep your skin radiant, keeps it healthy, keeps it hydrated, you know, and your hair as well. So I'm going to start that off by saying, you know, when you eat things, you know what to eat and what not to eat. You know what I'm saying? You know what's consumable and what's not consumable. But see, what we feel to, what we do is when it comes to cosmetics and products, we don't have that same principle. Some of us don't. I was one of them people before I found out the truth. So I'm not just pointing fingers at anybody. I was one of those people. And you know, we are supposed to be taking our people out of darkness and bringing them to the marvelous light. And this is part of that. So what I'm saying is, okay, through ingestion, which is eating, an injection is a quick way, you know what I'm saying, to get things in your body. Now, another way that your body takes things in is under the arms and under the feet. You know what I'm saying? So, I have today a demonstration on a two, can, a two product thing that I will put together. For your to massage, your, you know, your body moisturizer, massage, whatever after work. So what I have here is cold press coconut. Right. Press coconut oil. Okay. If everybody can see that, okay. And I have here grapeseed oil. You see? Now before I make this, I would like somebody in the chat to please grab a random bottle of commercially bought lotion or anything, and please turn it around and read the ingredients in that. Please, if you will, anybody, I don't care who it is, anybody, grab a, go go wherever, grab a bottle of lotion commercially bought, turn it, turn it around and read the ingredients on the back, if you will. I got, I got she butter. I ain't got, I don't even got low on lotion. So but, correct. Uh, That's good. I mean, you the chic. I know you already know him, but some of us on the group chat need this education. You know what I'm saying? So anybody is male, female, whoever, just grab. I know y'all, if it's a female on here, I know y'all got bath and body work lotion. I know you do. Victoria's Secret. I know you do. Come on. Yeah, man. Just grab it. It'll take, th it'll, it'll take three seconds. Just read the ingredients on the back. I'm just trying to put y'all on game. <laughs> Found something, CJ? Let me go. Let me go check. Let me check my girl's. Uh... Yeah, she got some bath and body works in there. <laughs> we already know. Uh... But while the brother's doing that, <clears throat> I can do something else for y'all. Yeah, so, she. She hand makes all her lotion and shea butter and stuff like that. I guess she don't have any. Okay, so everybody on the chat is good with the with the with the with that moisturizer thing, but I'll still show you something that I use. But anyway, sea moss. Okay, this particular bag that I had that was one pound, but a little left in the bag or whatever. I got it from a brother named Autumn Dre on Instagram. You see the logo right there. You know what I'm saying? Alkaline Gourmet on Instagram. If you want to, he was Dr. Savi's apprentice. If you want to get any of the products that he has, he has Honduran sea moss, raw Irish sea moss, which is in his bag, all kinds of products, Bantana oil, everything you can think of. He's got it on his on, on his website if y'all give a brother a shout or whatever. So, with, with sea moss, I know if anyone has, 
like order some sea moss from someone and they don't make it themselves. It's like twenty dollars a jar, twenty five dollars a jar, thirty dollars a jar, whatever. So I'm gonna give you a cost effective way to have your own sea moss. Okay, I'll answer that in a second. What's the website? I got you. Hold on, but um. <clears throat> This is the raw sea moss, okay? It's just like really hard, plasticky feeling when you get it or whatever. Brown, light brown, tan in color. It don't take much to make you a 16-ounce jar of this, okay? A 12-ounce, whatever jar you got. So as you can see, I got some in the palm of my hand, if y'all can see that. So I'm just going to take this little bit right here. I have a jar right here, clean glass jar. Please make your sea moss in glass. Don't put it in plastic. You just throw those dried up pieces in there, just like that, okay? I got distilled water, not spring water, distilled water. Vapor distilled, okay, there's nothing in it, okay? All the minerals from the sea moss is gonna soak in the water. This is what the people are doing and they're selling it to you for $30 when you can do it at home by yourself. You understand? So I basically just filled the jar almost a little over half with the still water and the dry sea moss. No boiling, no cooking, no adding nothing, no none of that. It's just in the jar and it's soaking. So as I continue my demonstration, you will notice that the dry sea moss will start expanding like a sponge is soaking in the water. This is what you grind in your um, ninja or your blender or whatever, and this is how you make your sea moss gel. But we'll get to that by the end of my segment. All right? So I'm putting this down right here. Y'all saw me do that. All right. So now, next thing I want to share with you. This is one of the purest products that I've found that's sold commercially on the market. This is Dr. Broner's Pure Peppermint Hemp Soap. Okay, I, I choose to use peppermint because it's good for sore muscles. You know, I work in the shipyard. I, I do rigging, so I work with cranes. I do a lot of heavy things, industrial things, and I'm also in the gym. You know, I go to Iron Asylum, you know, every day after work. So, you know, you need the peppermint to, you know, soothe the muscles and things. But I would demonstrate how to make your own body wash at home instead of buying, you know, Irish Spring or all those other type of commercially things, you know, commercial board things. So we have the Dr. Broners. By the way, this is 18 and 1. You can you can wash your clothes with it. You can clean house with it. You can do laundry with it. I mean, everything. You can do everything, 18 and 1. So wash your body with it. So I have here Dr. Broners in its pure concentrated form. I have here just an empty little bottle. Once again, distilled water, there's nothing in it, vapor distilled. So first of all, let me explain. This is very concentrated. So I'm gonna pour about four parts, four parts roughly of the concentrated soap. The rest of this bottle is gonna get filled up with water. Close the jet, we close the top, give it a nice gentle shake around, you know, and that's it. This is your this is your soap. I'm just pour a little bit in my hand. Watch what happens. Look. I just pour that little bit in my hand. Look at that. The lab is wonderful. You know what I'm saying? It's good for after a good workout. You know, I like to use peppermint oil or whatever because it's good. You know, I combine other essential oils with it like. Eucalyptus, tea tree, things of that nature, you know, for it's good for, you know, your muscles and things of that nature when you're in recovery mode. So, anybody got any questions on that? Nope. Okay. But, but I will say the brother did put what you was reading earlier in the chat, uh, the Dr. Sabi list. So, uh, just to notify okay. everybody who didn't see it, couldn't okay. see the visual. Okay. Now, um, the next thing I will implement into the chat is essential oils. Essential oils is very important for 
holistic purposes, meditative purposes, so forth and so on. Because different essential oils invoke relaxation. Different essential oils invoke cleansing of thought. Different essential oils do different things, you know? So if you're not very familiar with essential oils, this is the thing that I did. I went and I, you know, I looked online and I said essential oils for beginners. And it brought me to this small book right here. That's sold on Amazon. You understand? And what I liked about this book that drew me to it was that in the back, it has a whole list of all kinds of ailments and what essential oils, you know, torments them and makes them go away. I will read some of these things that's on here. If you if you suffer from if anyone on the chat suffer from acne, I can give you a recipe right now for that 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 includes essential oils and a courier oil. So you can't just mix the essential oils full strength. You have to mix it with a courier oil, like olive oil or or, or, or um, black seed oil or whatever you prefer to moisturize your body with. It has to be a courier oil. So you will have that courier oil or rub or whatever. And you can melt it down by boiling it or whatever. And that would be your base, and you would add the essential oil. So I'm gonna read and listen. If anybody suffers from any from any of this, you know what I'm saying, just let me know, and I and I will go right across the graph and give you every essential oil. So we have acne, arthritis, athlete's foot, bad breath, boils and blisters, brittle nails, broken veins, bronchitis, chest infections, bruises, burns, cold sores, urinary infections. Dandruff, dermatitis, earache, eczema, flu, heavy periods, for the women, of course, hiccups, in insect bites, irregular periods, lack of period, menopause, mouth ulcers, neuralgia, nosebleeds, palp palpitations, period pain, piles, hemorrhoids, PMS, rashes, allergies, rheumatism, scars, skin ulcers, Sore throat, spots, sprains and strains, thrush, warts, wounds, cuts, and sores. I mean, and this just is a small book right here, but that just tell you, you know, how important that essential oils is into our lives, and we should implement those into our lives. What, what they Last say for the eczema? Book, what, what they say eczema. for the eczema? Come on with it. I got you. I got you. She go wrong. Eczema, okay. So that would be an essential oil, uh, essential mix of bergamot, geranium, what's that? Juniper and sandalwood, sir. Mix those four essential oils up with a curry oil, like coconut oil or whatever, and rub it wherever the eczema is, and it should essentially go away. A lot of us, you know, probably don't practice holistic things because it takes a little longer than the medication do from the slobs at the hospital. So it's like a lot of people don't have patience with it. But, you know, I met an old man herbalist about six years ago and it changed my life, you know. Um, and I haven't been the same since. And I just wanted to spread that knowledge to y'all if y'all did not know. Um, this book right here just got back into circulation a few months back. And I heard about it, and I ordered it off of Amazon. The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. When I tell you this thing has got everything in here, I'm talking everything. There's an author's right there. Y'all can see that. If you want to write that down, put it in your Amazon. Please put it in your Amazon, uh, you know, part. This book right here has everything. It has a glossary in the back. I mean, everything, bro, like everything. I mean, just everything. It had the picture of each plant, what it does. I mean, everything. This book is a book to have in your arsenal. Once again, this is the book to have. Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. So... <clears throat> Another thing I would like to share with you guys, you know, a lot of coughing and sneezing going on around. The burns being passed, a lot of creative stuff being flown in the air. So this concoction that you see before you is um, 
pure raw honey, and chopped onion. Okay? What you don't know about onions, and onions have so many antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory properties. It's a powerful, powerful vegetable. And when you combine it with the raw honey, it's just like some type of powerhouse when it combines together. And this is an old remedy. You take this, one tablespoon, if you feel the sniffles coming or, you know, any of y'all suffer from colds or anything like that, one, one spoon of this knocks it right out. Honey, raw honey, onion in a jar. Now, are you chop? Did you chop the onion up? Like just chop onion? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. As you can see. Yes, sir. That's fire. That's fire right yes, there. Sir. And uh, yeah, that's dope. That is dope. Yeah. All right. So the last thing I'm gonna give. Uh, the last thing I'm doing. And then I lead, yield the floor to my sheep. By the way, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. This is the first time I'm doing this. Hopefully, I have future time to do this as well. So, the last part of my uh, segment will be an all natural deodorant that I make for myself. Um, <clears throat> you know, when I found out about the main ingredient in deodorant, in the, the antiperspirant part of the other is aluminum zirconium, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, that's the main ingredient that stops you from perspiring. So, first of all, we have to understand that by us putting that aluminum chemical underneath our arms, we're taking it into our bodies because, like I said, there's a gland under here that, you know, it releases. Now, I hate to tell you, but it's been proven that if you have like an odor when you perspirate underneath your arms, you need to you need to detox your body. That's the body's way of letting expelling the toxins. You have that that ramish smell or whatever. No one knew that, but I found that out too. So here's a two ingredient, three ingredient thing that I have devised that saves you money and saves you time. So, like I said, we want to put all natural things on our body. We want to put all natural things. So, as you can see, this is cold press. I, I get big jars of this from BJ's. Cold press coconut oil, as you can see. So, I'm just going to put the coconut oil in there. Okay. Gonna make a small sample here. All right. Stick that to the side. Now our next ingredient is the notorious sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. <clears throat> Take the baking soda. Because what you want, you when you stir this up, you want the coconut oil to have like a gritty texture to it. So I'm just going to sprinkle that baking soda over that coconut oil. Just you see, I just didn't put that much. Okay? I'm going to spread that, put that baking soda on that coconut oil. Right? Put this down. Now I'm going to get my butter knife that I just had, and I'm going to stir it around. And when I tell y'all, I work in the shipyard, so I'm talking like hot days around a whole bunch of metal and steel, and that's that makes it even hotter on a submarine or whatever. This stuff holds you, man. It keeps you fresh all day. So, as you can see, it's got a nice texture to it. The baking soda has... Conformed, if you will, to the coconut oil. So it's like a paste. You see that? It's like a paste. Okay. Now, me, myself, I mean, I like to add essential oil to mine. So, you know what I'm saying? I'll get like, hold on, bear with me, y'all. 
I'll get my essential oil. Or this is my this is my like essential essential pack right here. I got hundreds of essential oils. This is like the ones I use all the time. So if I wanna, you know, this is by the way, if uh do terror, let, let me explain this. Do terror is the best essential oil you can buy on the market. It's expensive as hell, part of my language. One bottle like this size would be close to a hundred dollars, but it's worth it. But this guy right here that sold in your local Walmart, it's called Guru Nanda. His essential oils are pretty, pretty good as far as, you know, and they have, man, you can do like holistic treatments for your animals if any of you have pets. Like, it, it's a vast amount of things you can do with this natural stuff, man. So I got my essential peppermint oil. I like the peppermint. So don't add much. If y'all can see, let me, boom. Because I want y'all to see this. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just running my mouth. So I'm going to boop two drops. Well, three went in there. Three drops, single drops of peppermint oil. Stir that in. You know what I'm saying? We need to start getting back to the old ways, like making our own shit. I mean, excuse me, making our own stuff and everything. Like, we putting our money in their pocket. Nah. Everything is here. You got to just do your research, do your studying, and, and, and you know what I'm saying? Stop buying Perk Plus and stop buying Old Spice and stop buying all that stuff. They'll get broke real quick. But y'all don't hear me. But anyway, so, here we go. That's your deodorant. Now, me, I'm a big man. I'm 6'3". I'm about 225. I'm in the gym now. I was bigger than that, but now I'm in the gym. You know what I'm saying? So about this amount, I put under each arm. Look at that. That's it. I'm fresh all day. I ain't putting all the chemicals. Like I said, you read the back of the deodorant or whatever. It's got all kinds of chemicals. And even some of the natural stuff that we be getting, be having some BS in it. You got to watch it. You know what I'm saying? They may have aloe and boom, 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 but then you got that word that the AI got to tell you how to pronounce because you just ZFBR. What the, how the fuck you pronounce? Oh, excuse me. How do you pronounce that? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so that's your deodorant. And, and, and this concludes my uh, weird science demonstration to all my family. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like to joke around, but thank you for having me. And that was my first demonstration. Hopefully, I'll get better with time. You know what I'm saying? But peace yeah. and love and love to everybody. And thank you for tuning in to Hassan's Holistic Health segment. Thank you. That's excellent, man. Episode one, man. Great. You got to do a podcast. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's a wrap. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that was real helpful, man, because that deodorant was real quick. That baking soda, coconut oil. Whatever essential oil you need, or yeah, 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 one or two drops, boom, you done. That's fire right there, man. Yeah, and I also do like you know what's your moisturizer, uh, uh, grapeseed oil and coconut oil, and then add your essential oils. You know according to what you want. If you want a muscle rub, if you want a relaxation rub, you can do whatever because you add the chamomile and lavender to that concoction. That's your relaxation rub after a shower, after work, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, I just want I mean, I knew most of y'all was on that tip. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I felt like, okay, I'm strong at this point. So let me do this and see what's up. You know what I mean? So I hope everybody appreciated the information I had to present. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate y'all listening and giving me your undivided attention. Nah, fire. Appreciate, appreciate it, yeah. man. Appreciate oh, real, that, man. Real chemist, bro. Real chemist right there. So yeah. real time chemist. Excellent job, man. Yeah, yeah, real mm -hmm. practical, and uh, the stuff that was kind of intricate. I got. I'm gonna play it back, but for the most part, the deodorant it's real, real simple. You know what I mean? Good stuff, man. Um, so I, I just got some review, especially for brothers like uh, CJ, Universal. I believe that's. Kelly exclusive, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Um Eunice Bay. There's some review. Uh Hanuna Islam.
Oh, 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 um, so what's his name? Uh, Hassan, somebody asked about the website too. Don't forget about that in the chat. I mean, Universal asked about the website. Okay, yeah, I, I, I got him. I'm going to type, type that in the chat, bro. Okay. Back in here, okay, there she goes. Hmm. So, yeah, so brothers like Eunice Bay, Cali Exclusive, or Universally, uh, CJ, just a little review. Okay. Okay, so yes, yeah, so he put it in the chat, Universal. Alclinegorman.net. <clears throat> this is a book, Are You Confused About Law? I'm just going to run through some run through some things here. Mom, check the moss out. It's already spreading. Look. Moss? Uh-oh. -uh. See, see? Look. See y'all? Look. I can't see. Oh, you can't see it? Oh, oh there you go. My bad. Look, it's already spreading. Look, bro. Oh, yeah. It's already gotten bigger in the water. See that? It's that yeah. simple. This is quick, too, bro. I usually let it sit for 24 hours, though. Oh, yeah. See? That's it's only been, like, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, give or take. Been 10 minutes, man. So you whip that up. So only take, yeah, to fill up a whole jar, don't take that much. Don't take that much at all. Yeah, so yeah, so that pound bag you buy lasts you for months, you and your family for months, bro. Oh yeah. Um okay, so just some review. <clears throat> couple brothers in here where a lot of this stuff is a blank canvas so a lot of the moors that have been studying it's, it's going to be repetition so we got flags here we got the Al Moroccan flag in English you pronounce it American so when we say a Moorish flag we talk about the flag of the Americas from Canada all the way to South America everything in between um Representing the empire, we have multiple kingdoms, different nation states, different clans, different tribes, but all with the same nationality of people, right? There's no difference from people that identify today as Black, Latino, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, Indian, Native American. This is the, the flag in the middle is the continental flag of the continental American flag. And if you notice, there's a tree in here. Uh, representing the tree of peace. Most people are familiar with the Iroquois Confederation. Or they, they'll loosely commercially set of five civilized tribes in America that formed a union, a confederation, because the foreigners are starting to come over here, right? They, they'll say the five Indian tribes. What these tribes did was plant a tree of peace to symbolize settling their differences. Um... This tree is also in the flag of Lebanon. The ancient Lebanese have the same flag. The reason I'm bringing that up is to show the connection because it was Moors over there as well. Uh, the Sumerians and things of that nature. The Moors from Mesopotamia and things of that nature. Um, and the reason I mentioned that to show you the empire was not just in the Americas. It was worldwide. But it symbolized the tree of peace. Islam, when we say Islam, we're expressing peace. All right, so that's another connection to how Islam as a way of life is very ancient. Um, we did a lot of infighting. We stopped our, settled our differences. We planted a tree to symbolize our union and to stop the infighting. Just a little background on that. We have the Star Spangled Banner. And I'm and as I'm summarizing and going through this for the brothers, 
anybody that's savvy in this information or more astute, more adept, uh, as I'm summarizing, if we want to ask stuff, please uh, ask stuff as I'm, if, if I'm missing anything as well. Um, on the far right, we have the Star Spangled Banner, which symbolizes the Slavs that came over here, or not were brought over here, or sent over here by the brutish Moors, British Moors. Um, you know, they were pretty much carrying out jail sentences. Um, they formed colonies over here. Jamestown uh, ultimately became 13 colonies. These colonies were disgruntled. They wanted to separate themselves from the yoke of the brutish Moors or the Moors that were in Europe that had jurisdiction over them, that they were paying taxes to. Right. So that's why they start the Boston Tea Party. They start throwing the tea off the boats. They they was rebelling against doing all that tax stuff, right? We over here in America, right? So the Moors over here adopted these uh Slavs. So ultimately they declared their independence and amongst other things, the Treaty of Paris, they were allowed to basically disconnect and not be looked at as European subjects anymore. They were their own entity after the Articles of Confederation, where the 13 colonies formed a union. This banner represents that union. So this is not the American flag. It's the European Union flag representing commerce. After that, they enter into a treaty with the people of the land, the Moorish Empire, the Moorish Dominions. And our, and our head was called a sultan. So their higher-ups, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington and the crew created, discussed treaty negotiations with our sultan. And ultimately, a treaty was created. And then after that, there was a constitution that was created for checks and balances for this new entity that got created called the United States. All right. So you might have heard of the term three fifths. You know, what is three fifths? What is, what is, you know, um, in the Constitution or while we're quote unquote blacks? Three fifths of a vote, like three fifths of a human, right? Yeah, exactly. We're not four humans. Crazy. <laughs> what does that terminology mean? So, to, to, so now we're dealing with fractions. So five fifths, five over five will, will equal one. Three right. fifths is two fifths missing. So to be whole, a human being will, right? A human being will have a mind, body, soul, nationality, and religion. Once we were stripped of our nationality and religion, now we're just three fifths. We're missing two uh, ingredients to make you considered a well-rounded, wholesome human being. And you know, it's not our fault. K through twelve, burning the great book burnings. How they area fifty one, area fifty one all the ancient jurisdictions to make it look like, you know, something else, knocking noses off, off the Sphinx and a lot of different things they've done. So we don't know our illustrious culture. It's not all our fault, but none of the less, that's what it means. A people that have lost their way. We just want to be gang members, NBA, NFL players, actors, no infrastructure, no pride, no setting up businesses, no estate planning for the future so that the youth that grow up in our society continue to know how to run the businesses. That's not our, uh, oh, uh, we got, I, got, I see a hand raise. Um, my serious, you got something? Uh, yeah, bro. Um, just to add on to what you're saying, uh, Sheik, um, the three fifths of the man clause also pertain more to they had to do that in order to limit the amount of voting power that we have. So imagine if you're three fifths of a man, as they say, the way they're saying it here, it's not so much getting into you're an animal it's getting into the fact that the voting power, it would take at three fifths of a man. It would take two men to equal one vote. And that's how they done our vote. Now, mind you, at this time period, women didn't vote yet. So this is just us. 
All right. They put us in that category of only being three fifths of a man so that we would need to at least have two men in order to have an actual whole vote. Because when you add three fifths to three fifths, you get an improper fraction. But put, you know, properly, it's one vote. It takes two of us to have just one vote. And that's how they utilized that in the politics back then. We were only, it, it took more than one of us. We couldn't be an individual with one vote. It had to be two or a collective of us just to equal that one vote. And that's part of what that three fifths of a man is breaking down as well. Just to add on to what you were saying, she. Wow. That's wow. Wild. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Please add on. I'm, when I'm in summary mode, it might be some little things. But if you read the Constitution, it's going to talk about it in that space, dealing with voting. Um, let's continue here. So we have a citizenship uh, classifications. Now we're dealing with a national. That's somebody that's, you know, have bloodline ties to the land. Um, we have naturalized citizens. There's a foreigner who the national accepts into their society, subjects, those who are subject to the law, those individuals who do not have to say, do not have a say in the administration of government nor the creation of laws. They must obey the law discriminately. Corporations may fall into this category. Then we have alien or foreigner, which is an individual who maintains political allegiance to their national government, who may also be traveling to another country on visa, business trip, distinguished guests, refugees, et cetera. So before I continue, you know, <clears throat> Moors that are classified as Black, Negro, color, Latino, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, Indian, Native American, et cetera, are truly the nationals of the Americas um, and are supposed to be working together and set up government. If that was the case right now, then we would naturalize foreigners that want to come over here as long as they you know, pay allegiance to the empire. Since we are not in that position, the nationals have become naturalized under the 14th Amendment, even though it's fraud for a lot of different reasons. For one, it wasn't ratified. For two, the United States is not a land. It's a European Union of foreigners. So you can't, you can't be, you can't be a part of that. Right. Um, especially us, people that were here already. Um, but since we sleep, that's what's going on. Um, foreigner is a person that has their national allegiance, but they just, like you say, you're just traveling to abroad. So these are citizenship classifications. Like I just said earlier, it's stated right here, 14th Amendment makes you subject to a corporation, not a citizen of a country or a nation. So just think about it like Walmart. How can I be a citizen of Walmart? Think of it like that. If I'm not a board member of Walmart, I'm not, I'm not on a board. You know, if you're not on the board of Walmart, then your vote doesn't count. If you're not a part of Walmart, that would make sense, right? So even in that sense, because we just had a voting poll or whatever, we just had a voting situation. So same thing, United States is a Walmart, so they have board members. They're board members. They might call them certain other things, but well, it's called the Electoral College, actually, in, the, in their corporation. If you're not part of the Electoral College, then your vote doesn't count. It's essentially just data that they take, that they get from the cattle. They get data from the cattle so they know what face to put in front of them to pacify them. But both sides work for the same team. All right, so let me continue here. Mm -hmm. Just interrupt me for any questions, too. I'm just, I'm, I'm just flying through some stuff. We can marinate on anything that's being said here. So most of the wars that are talked about, kindergarten through 12th grade, they're going to make it seem very like the Indians and something like that. But just know these are wars against the Moors in different time frames. They got the Beaver Wars, commercially called the Iroquois Wars. I just 
spoke on the Iroquois earlier, which is a commercial name for five tribes of Moors that formed the Union. So these Moors had a war with the French in the Great Lakes area, 1600s to the 1700s, 1609 to 1701. It was a territory war between Moorish clans in the Michigan area, Great Lakes area. So not just Michigan, really Chicago, New York, Ohio, Indiana, all the Moors in that area were beefing against the French. We got the Anglo Powhatan Wars. And remember from the earlier demonstration when we say Powhatan, that's the crew where po Pocahontas was from. You got something, uh, CJ? Uh, just question: Why why was we beefing with the French? The, uh, what was the reasoning for that? Well, the French were seeking to colonize. They were trying to take over. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah they were trying to take over. Yes, sir. Okay, that's so, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if you just replace more with Indian, or all the clans are still in play, just knock off the Indian and put more, because this is not this is not India. And I, everybody in here, I showed everybody in here the demonstration, multiple demonstrations on, on why it's not Indian and this is more. Pretty much everybody in this chat should know that. If not, just let me know and I'll, I'll go into another demonstration to show that too. Um, we got the, oh, what I was saying was Pohatan, that's Pocahontas. That's that's the crew, that's the, the clan Pocahontas was from, or the commercial story Pocahontas. Um, so when we say Anglo, we're implying Englishmen or Anglo Saxon. So this is the Moors that were going to war against the English. And once again, the Pocahontas story is based on these, this war specifically. Um, and I want to highlight too, some of the ancient tribal names, the Tassinakamaka or Sinkamaka. Notice the Mecca. Most people think are Omeka, Omec, or, you know, um, which is pre-Aztec or Totec. Mecca, Arabia, old Mecca. So when we say ancient Mecca, it's really over here. Remember, we all the indigenous cultures, all the oldest pyramids is over here. We spread the culture east. So that's why some of the names are even over there that really originated in the Americas. I wanted to highlight that too. This was in the Virginia colony, these wars. Um, so I'm going to go into every war, but I want to put context on some of the some of the wars here. When I had your number been blowing me up lately. Let's see. Uh, so this is some of the territories, Moorish territories, different tribes on the East Coast. We controlled the trade from here. So what they call the Mali Empire on the other side. We controlled it from here to what they call China today. Let me read this. So in the alliance with the enforcement of religion and direct relationship to the weekly conversion schools on the Moors. Now, what are conversion schools? This was the this was the beginning of when they start. Separating the children. Well, not the beginning. I must this is a this is a period, like I said, the beginning where they separate the men and the women, the, the children from the women, and start teaching the children pseudo history. So now they buy into the fact Indian, either I got shipped off a boat from Africa, everything but you from here, you from the land, you got an illustrious culture here. All that stuff brainwashed out. All right. So that's gonna give you. Uh, a little background on what these conversion schools, the purpose of these conversion schools. Muslims in Europe, the Christian black codes were created in 1724, president to the codes of Nor, Corps of France in 1712. The Willie Lynch manual is created to deal with rebellious Moors. It, incl it includes plans to brainwash the Moorish tribes to divide us in the mind. The Europeans decided to call some of us black, some of us Indian, some of us Spanish, some of some Negro. Establish various convoluted parts of our history in different forms. 
directed and designed toward each specific group to cause confusion and prevent the unity amongst the different groups or clans or tribes, etc. The most famous one is called the Trail of Tears, where they uh, scrambled us, you know, it might be a tribe that was indigenous to Florida, scramble them, take them to Oregon, you know, etc. Um, so we won't be familiar with the terrain for war, you know, they don't want us, they want us to you know, have an advantage in war. That's why in the Vietnam War, they lost the war because the Vietnamese, the Vietnamese people knew the terrain. They was hopping out the trees. They would get, you know what I'm saying? They, you ain't got a chance to get some people that in their own land, right? So these are tactics that were used to, to cause confusion. Let's continue here. So, Well, we're not familiar with the Willie Lynch manual. Check that out. You will see the tactics are still being used today, actually. So here's a it's a book that I highly recommend called When Rocks Cry Out by Horace Butler. And here's a quote from that book. It's a PhD author. No historian of the Maya who values their reputation and career, and career will admit Africans were in the Americas before Columbus arrived. <clears throat> so once again, when we wear our ambassador hat, we waking the people up, we talking to them, we want to show them just stuff like this, unbiased information. Oh, Africans were here before Columbus arrived. He came in the 1400s, but the cross Atlantic slave trade was in the 1500s to the 1700s. Right? So we want to just show the people stuff like that. Um, so then be more inclined to listen to the more what he has to say and how it's imperative to get back to the culture mm. like I said just hit me with some, some thoughts some questions statements as I'm going through this because I'm just really just kind of summarizing it stands out to me. So once again, the flag behind me, the Moorish flag, represents Venus. Venus is dealing with the love vibration, the heart chakra, feminine energy, fertility. Also, the symbol for the Moorish Amarokan or American, you pronounce Amarokan in English, is just American flag. Each point representing the five nations or the five points of light, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Green represents the color of the star, Venus, and her alchem alchemical metal, copper. When copper is exposed to the elements, it experiences a series of chemical reactions that is a pale green outlayer called patina. Noble Drew Ali is also responsible for restoring the chopped cherry tree or the American or Amarokan flag out of the hidden vaults of Washington. So most people are familiar with this. Most of the quote unquote Indian community, they'll look at this and they say, oh, this is the Hiawatha Wampum Belt. One, two, three, four, five, right? Five civilized tribes planting the tree of peace. I'm just giving you a, if you don't know what this means, I'm just kind of Kind of telling you. Um, so Hiawatha studied the works of Prophet Deganawita, honoring Deganawita similar to Prophet Muhammad. He unified the separate confederations in his name. Hiawatha is known for the unification of the Iroquois Confederation. So this is, you know, Iroquois, five civilized tribes formed a union. The Wampa represents the unification of peace amongst the five nations, the Mohawk, Anawita. Anadaga, Cayuga, and Seneca. The purple color is associated with royalty and white is purity. The white lines connecting each square represent unity. The spade shape or tree of the peace of peace in the middle represents the five confederations dropping their weapons and coming in peace. The Iroquois, or the five tribes of Moors, were responsible for helping father Europeans in forming the first Continental Congress, as well as drafting constitution. So the, the tribes of Moors that were here, 
help the foreigners to, from Jamestown or Pilgrim Crew. They watched the Moors over here, and that helped them set up a government for themselves. George Washington, Thomas Barclay, Benjamin Franklin, all the, the quote unquote founding fathers, quote unquote, that they teach us as the founding fathers. Those people observed the Moors, how they set up government, implemented that for themselves. Right. And then turned around later, Reconstruction history, and made it seem like the Aboriginal people were just in tents and teepees, bows and arrows, hunters and gatherers, a very primitive level. Right. Like we weren't like we didn't have high technology. Like we didn't have Taj Mahal style buildings over here. Like we didn't have pyramid complexes that was connected to the heavens or the earth. That they call Area 51. And you can't go. You can't go there right now. Like the Grand Canyon ain't full of pharaohs. Mummies, temples, pyramids, as if, right, the Indians were just tents and teepees, but we weren't the Indians, right? So we need to know that. Um, so Congressional Record, House Resolution 75. Uh, whoever isn't familiar with that document, I actually have a, a certified copy from the Library of Congress pretty much saying... The Moors have the right to utilize the five noble titles, Ali, Al, Bey, Day, and El. But just know the five civilized tribes are codified or title nobility. So when we're dealing with Moorish titles of nobility, let's go into what they mean. Ali. Exalted and earned title. It is not self assigned, nor is it given at birth. It is given for supreme courage, omnipotence, and accomplishment. L, usually given to women, creators of law, a legislative branch of government, the seven Elohim, the creative planetary forces having an effect on earth. What are the seven Elohim? The sun, our Sunday. Let's just say the sun, the days of the week are representations of the seven Elohim. The seven days of the week is just an expression of paying homage to a particular planet or energy of a planet. So we got the sun, we got the moon, we got Mars, we got Mercury, we got Jupiter, we got the holy day, Venus, and Saturn. Seven Elohim days. We got Bay. Enforcer of the law. The executive branch of government. That's where you get the sheriffs, or what they say, sheriff, right? And even in the uh the sheriff emblem, that's that the, the badge, that's yellow star that they use for the sheriff department. That's not something they just made up. They got that from something, right? Five point of star. That's Moorish science. They're acting as the base since the, since the more just want to be gang members, rappers, entertainers, don't want to set up government, don't want to set up businesses. You got foreigners acting like bays. Ow, master of mathematics, geometry, psychology, science, day, master of astrology, cosmology, also can signify governor. So in the Constitution, when you read the Constitution, it says they shall, you know, they have no ability to grant titles of nobility. That's only for the pilgrims or the Slavs. We have titles of nobility. So that doesn't apply. So they codify by saying five civilized tribes. They always try to portray us as barbarians and savages, yet... If it weren't for the Iroquois Confederation, there would have haven't been no first continental Congress nor a constitution. The five titles of nobility are, like I just read earlier, Al, Ali, Bay, Dan, El. And we just talked about Prophet Don Dinoita earlier, but his his name mean meant because he transitioned the two river currents flowing together. That represents the flow of Kudalini energy in the body activating. The pineal gland or the sixth chakra, the same symbol utilized in hospitals today. So now we have 
<clears throat> we see how this is all connected to a a deeper, uh, higher vibrational context. And these are just a list of wars. I won't go too much on that, but as you, you know, we kind of went through this a couple of weeks ago, actually. But once again, from the Moorish perspective, Yahshua ben Yosef was an actual person, um, just like Muhammad, just like Prophet Noble Jew Ali. These are people that came as messengers of the light. That is what a prophet is, is a messenger. A messenger of what? The truth. And they also come with instructions on how to correct yourself and get back in harmony with high vibrational acti activity and unity so we can be prosperous. So he was around during Yahshua ben Yosef was around during the 6th century, crucified, his crucified dates. And what I do like about this timeline because it shows how Constantine, which was a lot of Constantine, you got the Byzantine Empire, Roman Empire, etc. And they were going to war against the Ottoman Empire or the different sultans. Um, so, you know, Rome went against Yahshua. Rome was going against Sultan Muhammad, or the, you know, the Ottoman Empire. That's why we always show how we went from Constantinople to Istanbul depending on who was, you know, victorious at the war at the time. But the war was always against the ancient creed of our people and the new creed of our people. People that kept the covenant and our people that decided to turn Roman. We went to war against each other. There was no pale people around at this time. These were Moors that were identifying as Roman. So no pale people. The pale people around at this time were just torpedoes that we used to that the Roman Moors used to sin against the original Moor that kept the original culture. So after murdering Prophet Yahshua ben Yosef, or Jesus, in 325 AD, Roman Emperor Constantine called for the Council of Nicaea, which authorized the Roman clergy to vote to change Yahshua's name to Jesus, the Christ, representing the peace and justice Yahshua taught. Jesus means justice. And the degree of knowledge, a light activation of the pineal gland, or Krishna, or Christ degree, activation of the jewel, or the Jew, he had reached. All right, just a little context. Uh, so whoever, heard, whoever hasn't heard of the Nicene Council, um, that's where they remixed the Bible, watered it down, made it very anthropomorphic, um, the parable you know, based. So now the, the original intent of the Bible is it's veiled unless you already know the information all right, all right. And now you can look at the Bible and still get the true intent. But if not, you're going to get rocked to sleep with the parables and, and the stories. So the foundation of Christianity began in Rome. The Roman nations founded the first church of whom crucified Yahshua the Nazareth for seeking to redeem his people under the yoke of the Roman law. Jesus himself was the true blood of the ancient Canaanites and Moabites and the and inhabitants of Africa, seeking to redeem his people in those days from the pressure of the pale skin nations of Europe. Rome crucified him according to their law. The European had peace for a long time until Muhammad I came upon the scene and fulfilled the works of Yahshua. The holy teachings of Yahshua was to the common people to redeem them under the great pressure of the hands of the unjust, that the rulers and the rich would not oppress the poor, also that the lion and the lamb may lie down together and neither will be harmed. These teachings were not accepted by the rulers, neither by the rich, because they love the principles of the Ten Commandments. So that was a quote from the Quran. So more genealogy. Of course, whoever didn't know, Jesus' grand grandmother was Ruth. In the Bible, there's a book called Ruth. Um, and Ruth was a Moabite. So that means Yahshua was a Moabite. That's where you get 
Moor, Moroccan, ancient Moabites, ancient Moab. All right, so that's the connection on how Yahshua is our, you know, our brother, bloodline-wise. Most people know about the Moors, you know, by the time we get to the 600s, 700s, now we're talking about the Moors that's going into Spain. That's the most commercial story. So I won't stay too long on that. Um, you know, during this period from 600s to the 1400s, we got po different popes that are commanding the Knights Templars, the Knights of Columbus, the Christian Crusade, all these things right here, where the Pope was, you know, trying to shut down the empire. The Pope was sending foot soldiers to come and shut down what they call the Saracens or the, or the, or the Hevelins. Anybody that wasn't Catholic, you got to get rid of them because that's the devil. Right? I, that, that was their excuse for coming over and doing stuff like that, right? So today, these foot soldiers or the name of these military orders, I should say, are Masonic Lodges. The Knights of Columbus, today, they're not a military arm there. It's a Masonic Lodge. All right? Eastern Stars and a Masonic Lodge. But at one time, these were institutions sent by the Pope to colonize the republics, the Moorish nation-states, the indigenous people of the world. You see the look, third crusade, fourth crusade, right? It's going on for a long time. So actually the Treaty of Peace and Friendship in the 1700s between the Moors and the United States was actually designed to end all these wars. Because it was like thousands of years of wars. So why are we showing this brother right here? And then why are we going straight to this preacher right here? Because we're showing how they used to dress. They used to put wigs on to mock, to mock us. They used to wear wigs to mock us. And I remember, you know, we used to see this stuff in school and wonder why. Why do you, all these ex-presidents and old, these old Europeans, why they wearing these fluffy wigs? They never went into detail in school about this. But, uh, you know, they actually, it was a party called the Wig of More Party. The Wig of More Party. Ultimately became the Whig Party and ultimately became the Republican That's Party. Sorry. Ain't that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah, man. I'm soaking up this game. That's the same. <laughs> we we all seen man. this. Yeah. It didn't, didn't it make you think, like, why they got these wigs on? Like, why they got that's not their yeah. natural hair. Like, why they that's doing, similar right? to like that blackface thing they be doing, they've been doing. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Crazy, man. Insane. Oh, Rasirius, you got something? Go ahead, bro. Yeah, um, just wanted to add on to that for those who don't know too much about the Red Man's Wig Party, keyword Red Man's Wig Party. Up until 1865, the Red Man's Wig Party, that was when the pale skins decided to call themselves white and call us Negro or black. That was politically when they started to strip us. It was the red man's wig party because they weren't called white man. They were called red man. They transported red man into the so-called native American or Indian. They made us Negro. They made themselves white. Anybody that reads third edition Black Law Dictionary, white does not mean Caucasian. They took on that name in 1865, and that's when they started to really call themselves white. So the Red Man's Wig Party is also what we now call, I believe, the Democratic Party. So just wanted to add on there. Go ahead, Sheik. That's wow. Let's see. Let's see here.
Yeah. Hmm. And, and once again, when we're talking about the slave trade, we're talking about Slavs. <clears throat> so that's another thing for the new brothers too. You know, when you first come into this space, a lot of people are gonna be like, Are you saying we was a slave? We wasn't shifted from Africa? Like I always tell people, you're never gonna find an African from East Africa from over that that south. I'm gonna call I'm gonna say Southeast Africa, because it's really Northwest Africa. We're gonna talk like that. You know, um, they'll never tell you about their ancestors getting shipped to America in slave boats. We're taught that story in the Americas, North America, but you go over there. None of them over there are going to tell you about, oh, yeah, I remember a couple hundred years ago, my ancestors got shipped to the Americas. And we, nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's verifying that. That's one thing. So, so now it's a book called The Golden Age of the Moors by Ivan Van Sotomayor, where it stated, quote, the 700 years which during which the Moors dominated the Iberian Peninsula was an era which many Europeans came into North Africa in states of servitude. The Moors brought millions of European Slavs over to North African ports of sale in Tangier, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, Fez, and Marrakesh, and some northern Egyptian towns. This is what eventually made many North Africans appear different from sub-Saharan Africans due to amalgamation over the years, the skin complexion became lighter. So why I'm highlighting that is because now you see a pale Arab, you'd be like, oh, that's Middle Eastern. But the original people of this area were dark people darker than me. But what happened is the Slavs, which were, you know, our grunt workers, the women were our harem. Some of the Moors start basically intermixing with the harem. So I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up two things. One, the original Slavs was pale people, blonde hair, blue-eyed people. Two, we start mixing with them. That's why we get these different shades or these people that are in the middle, right? Um, and that, that, that goes for Mexicans. That goes to quote-unquote Middle Eastern. That goes to Asians. It's always a sh dark shade, different shades, right? The bottom line was intermixing with the, with the Slavs. That's no, because these are questions that are going to come up too. Uh, as you get deeper into this info, when you're dealing with the people, they're going to have questions in that space. More shock. Let's continue here. You got some Benjamin Bay? Anything you want to add? So. This is a book continuing from when rocks cried out. Here's a quote. The curious schizophrenia developed among Catholics in relation to more science. On one hand, they were very much aware of the superior knowledge of the Moors, and they made efforts to capture the knowledge so that they would not be left behind. At the same time, they strove desperately to keep it away from the common people. And even at times to vilify it so that it would not become a challenge to Catholic, uh, Catholicism. They were afraid that the Enlightenment, the new ideas that this knowledge would bring, could affect the populace so that even though they were given the keys to inner sanctum, they kept the cage closed to the masses. So that even applies today. A lot of the higher ups, the rabbis, the higher ups of the church, in any religious institution for that matter, they are a part of the a fraternity that know this information. They know world history. But it's bad for business to tell somebody that's running the Catholic Church, like, oh, you know, you know, the origin is really Islam. Everybody in the church gonna get up and leave and stop tithing and giving that collection plate. So, you know, we just need to know the origin of all religion comes through more science. It was more science and culture before it was religion. Moors created religion. Once again, like I said, the last couple of weeks for our people that failed and that needed to get rose up. Here comes the prophet, right? 
Um, so tactics of hiding, suppressing, omitting, and watering down information are still in practice today. Evidence of this is the existence of secret societies, the Illuminati, Knights of Columbus, Knights of Malta, Eastern Stars, Daughters of American Revolution, KKK, Dual Society, the Shriners, York Rite, Scottish Rite, Royal Arch, Red Cross of Constantine, the Red Cross of Constantine, right? Which is, now that makes more sense, not that we went through that historical lesson, right? Constantine was against, right? The Muslims, Prince Hall, et cetera. We continue here. And you're still going down. You see there's a timeline here. And you notice it's a Pope this, Pope that against the Moors, all the way from losing the 600s, we all the way to the 1400s now. Right? The Moors versus the Roman. So nothing's changed from Yahshua time to right now. We still trying to get our people to wake up. Nothing's changed. And notice how when they're saying Yiddish Moors, you're pretty much saying the Jews in that area. So that's another thing. Original Jews. Who else is standing out here? Who else is standing out so many? Any thoughts, questions in the chat? Or any statements here? Oh. Now, we're talking about the presidents before George Washington. Remember, we're taught that he was the first, but <clears throat> he was actually the ninth, and it was eight presidents before him. So let's look at a couple of those. The first president would be Benner, um, was that Benjamin Banneker Bay. John Hanson? Yeah, John Hanson the Moor. So we got John Hanson the Moor. We have another president. We got another president. We got a fourth president. John Hancock. <clears throat> was an, all these people are melanated, by the way. These are melanated people that were um, president. George Washington will come into play into later. And during these presidencies, what was happening is, is something called First Continental Congress, Second Continental Congress. It was another um, reformation of the organization, the, Artic uh, the Articles of Confederation. That's when they became known as the United States. Before that, it was the Continental Congress and they got colonies, 13 colonies, 10 colonies, whatever. Um, so the reason they don't talk about that era of time in the United States or the pilgrim history in school is because it's going to open the door to the Moorish Empire and how they was interfacing with sultans and things of that nature. And they wanted they want you just to think you just was a slave, not in, in imperial power. They don't want you to know that the pilgrims were calling our elected official, your majesty, our sultan, our emperor, your majesty. They don't want you. You're just a slave. That's why Benjamin. That's why um, Benjamin Franklin is the first president. That's why they force feed you that information. Um, <clears throat> the Sundry Free Moors Act. Let me look in the chat. I see something in the chat. Oh, this book is called "Are You Confused About Law?" And let me bring up. The Sundry Free Moors Act, so I can read it out. <clears throat> hmm. Somebody can put it, somebody Google it. On their own, I wanted to show. I don't know why the search engine not working now, but I wanted to show a summary of what the Sundry Free Moors Act is talking about. I 
There we go. It looks like it might work this time. There we go. Yeah, so it's a South Carolina congressional record. Yep. Yeah, I'll send it to you. So just in a summary, the Moore Sundry Act of 1790 was a House resolution of South Carolina clarifying the status of free subjects of the Sultan of Morocco. The resolution offered the opinion that free citizens of Morocco were not subject to laws governing blacks and slaves. So let's get into a little bit more of this. So more, it was Moors here that knew they weren't black, Negro, or color. And they were making it known, right? Um, it was ruled that they would not be considered subject to the law of the state, known as the Negro law. So the reason why that's important because the treaty was in the 1700s. This was right in the same space and when the treaty was going on here. So it was people that knew that they were not black, Negro, and color. It made it known. And it was already, it was ruled that that's the case. These people got nationalities. These are not U.S. citizens. These people were here before that. They're part of an empire, et cetera. Um, I saw some, I saw a hand raised. Was that, yeah, was that, uh, who was that? Was I serious? Somebody raised their hand. Whoever raised it, just go ahead. You got the floor. Oh, yeah, I had my hand raised earlier, but you went into it with the Sundry Free Moors Act. You went into it. I just wanted to pretty much state that the presidents before George Washington, there was actually more than nine, but you would have to look into the fact that most of the presidents got assassinated. And under the Articles of Confederation and all of that, the presidential terms were only one year. And only being one year terms compared to now, which they have four year terms back then under the Articles of Confederation, Articles of Association up until the Declaration of Independence, they only had one year terms as president. And if you look back, most of them didn't make it the full term. So think about what the brother said when he said all these people were melanated. And then start looking at how many of them was getting knocked off being the president. So, yeah, there was about. Mm, to give a basic number. You had about 15, 16 presidents before George took office before 1789. But they had one year terms and some of them didn't make it the full one year. So just wanted to add on there. <clears throat> Wow. Uh, Benjamin Bay, did you, did you just put something in the chat or you have something? Let me see what you... Whatever you put in the chat didn't go through. Uh, DL, peace and love, man. Um, so, let me continue here. So now, dealing with Abraham Lincoln, <clears throat> most people know Abraham Lincoln. He got assassinated. They'll give a commercial story about how he was about freeing the slaves and all that type of stuff. Oh, yeah, peace. Oh, yeah, peace and love, uh, brother. So 1851, before becoming president, good old Abe Lincoln was a lawyer. And in the William Dungy versus John Spencer slander case where William Dungy, a Moor, was being publicly shamed, being called black and nigger, which at that time was a crime to be black. In the case of, uh, in the case of Abraham, I mean, <laughs> uh, Abe Lincoln argued that William was not a nigger, but a Moor, thus correcting his national status as black is a color. And in Spanish, Negro, a nigger means black. 
And law color means something artificial and fake, which places one in a civil or more two, so civilly dead status. By arguing that William is a Moor, he is reconnecting him with the nationality, which establishes his political status and enforces international law, like the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, etc. In the end, William Dungey won the case and was awarded $600 in damages. And here was a famous quote by uh, Abraham Lincoln regarding the brother William Dungey. My client is not a Negro. Though it is a crime to be a Negro, no crime to be born with a black skin. But my client is not a Negro. His skin may not be as white as ours, but I say he is not a Negro, though he may be a Moor. So this was a you know famous line by uh, Abraham Lincoln before he was actually a president. He was a lawyer. And um, this is a, the William Dungy case. This is actually a court case you can use as a res judicata uh, case law to substantiate your position as being a Moor. How, how the nationality is not a sovereign citizen movement. It's a nationality of people that's already on a record. Multiple different ways, different congressional records, case laws, you know, publications on the state level in the mayor's office, all type of things that you can use. You just need to be competent and work together with the people in real time, which are people. It's not really just about that. It's really about coming together and forming communities as well. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, keep, you know, especially for the new brothers, keep that one in your toolbox, you know, about the. Abraham Lincoln in the William Dungy case, how Abraham Lincoln distinguished what a Moor was and put it out there. Uh, let's see here. What else, what else is standing out to me here? Oh, yeah, check out the, oh, 1861, since we're speaking to Lincoln. Um, <clears throat> Lincoln and after Lincoln, you have a shift in the government as far as the United States is concerned. Now here comes democracy. Now here comes a, 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 a different form of government, right? It was a coup d'etat. A shift in politics. Um, just want to throw that out there. I also want to throw out there some movie called The Gangs of New York that everybody should look at. And you'll see that all the municipal police came from this. You know, so municipal officers are officers to, there's a security guard for the corporations. Think of it like Walmart security that has one rogue and terrorizing gangs in New York, the police department, etc. Oh, brother Abdullah El Talib Mosey Bay, peace and love, man. Peace and love, everyone. Peace and love. How y'all doing? Oh, pretty good, man. I'm just uh. Good, good, good. Abdullah. Yeah, I just finished the. I, well, we did a live, and then um, with Al Kanan, and that conversation went you know, a lot long longer after the live. Okay, yeah. that's all, all good, man. Uh, yeah, the brother just did a presentation earlier. All was, right, actually, actually, you inspired that man. We had a conversation uh, a couple weeks ago, and the brother did a. Uh, he's not in here right now, but yeah, the brother Hassan. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful presentation, man. What was the what's so, the what's the what's the, what's, what's the topic? What's what what was the topic? Oh, he went on the organic, uh, the sea moss and the alkaline and different foods and you know. All right. All yeah, right. he went in that type the of space. Was... Yeah, Doctor Sabi space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Then I did, I'm just going over some review for the new brothers right. I seen here, and. Uh, that's pretty much it, man. You got anything you wanted to share, man? Because we're pretty. I'm pretty much. All right, yeah. Um. Yeah. What do I need? Well, you have uh, what's coming up, or what around this time of year? 
you have what's known as the helical rising of Orion's belt. So that happens around Thanksgiving time, uh, helical rising of Orion's belt. That is known in it's 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 representative of the jet jet pillar. So the jet so the the the, oh, oh, the jet pillar will be lying this way, and then it's going to be resurrected. That's that is known. That is symbolic of the helical rising of Orion. When you're looking at a, a star, you have the the rising of a star. A star reaches its climax, and then it's setting. That's with Sirius or or Pallades, with Telgis. You know, so you have this the rising of Orion around this time period, and then. The, on the 24th of December, Orion, Taurus, and Sirius align, aligns on the, on, on the 24th. Now, Christmas, let me go outside. Let me go outside. Hold on. I'm in Dunkin' Donuts here. And they got the. So, Chris, Chris. Chris so 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 just wanted to give y'all some information regarding that. Now the, the Christmas, the star on the Christmas tree is, is serious. So you see that you see that a lot, that direct alignment with the serious Orion, Taurus, and Sirius, and with the sun, that direct alignment on December 24th. Now, Christmas, let's start Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving celebration is in the Iroquois Constitution. The Europeans hijacked it. They hijacked it our celebration. It's not, well, Thanksgiving is the killing of the more. I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the celebration. I'm talking about the food, the celebration, the cornucopia. You see that in the Iroquois Constitution, the actual, I'll, I'll, I'll send, I think, if I'm serious, I sent it to you. If I'm serious, I sent you two links this morning. The two links I sent you, if i serious, this morning. Yeah. In your text. Yeah. Dealing with, uh, dealing with um, the eat Thanksgiving. All right, go to your text and put that in the chat. There's two links that I sent you. Regarding that uh, that uh, that uh, that comes from the Air Corps Constitution, uh, excerpts from that. Put those two links in the chat. You'll see it. Uh, Thanksgiving regarding the Air Corps Constitution. Yeah, put those in the chat. That's what I'm talking All right. about. All right, because too often, I, I and I and I and I love my brothers and sisters, but they're they're so called Afrocentric. They're so called. I'm explaining. What I mean by that? Why do I call my brothers and sisters who claim to be Afrocentric? Why do I call them so-called Afrocentric? Because they contrib they contribute our culture, the holidays, to Europeans. They'll say white man holiday, Thanksgiving, white man holiday, uh, 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 um, um, Christmas. Christmas, white man holiday, January first. White man holiday, Valentine's Day, white man holiday, uh, uh, um, Groundhog Day, white head man holiday, Easter, white man holiday, July 4th, white man holiday. That's what I'm saying. And then, so these same folks, these so-called Afrocentric folks, they are the ones that say, well, the, the white man came out of the cave. He didn't know Jack. Well, if he came out of the cave, how does he have a culture? If he didn't, if he didn't know Jack, and came out of the cave and didn't know Jack. How did he develop a culture? Hmm. Yeah. So I'm saying there's no, whatever instructions they're getting, whatever instructions my brother, our brothers and sisters who claim to be Afrocentric, whatever instructions they're getting, there's, there's a missing link. They can't identify the culture when Europeans are using it. There's some missing link in the teachings. The Europeans are using our culture every day and they can't identify it. So what type of teaching is that? 
He hijacked it. They hijacked it, our culture. You can't identify that they hijacked it. You can't identify that they distorted it. Yes, they distorted it, but you can't identify it, though. So what type of teachings are you really getting? Like, you don't learn how to decode? You don't learn decoding? You don't learn deciphering? You don't learn that, all right, yeah, this is what they did. All right, Starbucks, the Starbucks image. The character, Starbucks. On the, the, they don't say, well, that's the white man stuff. Oh, they Europeanize it. So they don't say, so they see a Europeanized image, Starbucks, on the Starbucks um, uh, logo, and say, well, that's the white man stuff. No, they'll see the Statue of Liberty in the harbor. And they cannot by culture. They just Europeanize the image. The torch, the torch, that's, the, that's Venus. Tor Venus is known as the torch bearer because the Venus is bright. Is, is bright. Venus is known for 263 days. Venus rises before sun, sunrise. It's known as the bright and morning star. There's a 52-day transitional period. Then Venus for 263 days, Venus rises after sunset, known as the bright and, and evening star. It's Lucifer. So they refer to Lucifer, that's in the Bible. In the King James Bible, it refers to Lucifer, it refers to as the light bearer. Luke, light, fur bearer, and Greek, phosphorus, because it's pH in Greek, phosphorus, light bearer. Why? And so you have Easter. Easter is Venus. Easter is Tarte. Easter is not. Easter is not March 21st. That's not Easter. Easter is a female name. Easter is Venus. Easter is not the sun. So you have the vernal equinox, which is March 21st in, in the northern hemisphere. That's not Easter. Easter is between, it's the helical rising of Venus. It's between mid-March and mid-April. The United States presidential inauguration before 1932 was on, was every four years, it was a different date. It was a different date every four years up until 1932. Abdullah, why was it different dates? Because it was marked, it was the, the, the United States presidential inauguration was marked with to Venus. Venus is not fixed. So what they did was do a, an amendment. They what? Set it to what? Serious. January 1st is January 20th. The United States presidential inauguration is set to serious. On January 20th, Sirius is in the night sky the longest. January 1st, Sirius is in the midheaven, the highest point in the sky. It's not New Year. It's just, it's not, it's not even, the, it's not the beginning of Sirius. It's not the helical rising of Sirius. It's where Sirius, once again, star, star rises. Then it's at its highest point. Then it sets. Or well, Sirius is at its her highest point on January 1st. It's still ours. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. That ball dropping. The ball dropping in New York. That's serious. The ball dropping in New York. That's serious. That's serious. It's not Happy New Year. It's not Happy New Year. All right? It's not happy. It's no new. There's no new because it's not the helical rising of Sirius. It's the Sirius at its highest point in the sky. New would be a helical rising. When the sun, where a, where, a, where a star begins, you know, the rise. When you say new, that starts a new cycle. December 25th starts a new cycle. So if you want to say new, that's December 25th. That's the birth of the sun. So there is something new that it does occur near January 1st. But what is the new, Abdullah? The birth of the sun. You don't need to say Abdullah said anything. Go to the sunrise sunset chart. My finding of facts, the sunrise sunset chart. When you go 
January, you start from January 24th, 21st, right? That's where the sun is at its highest point of elevation. After January 21st, you'll see a negative. Every, 10, every seven days, there'll be a 10 to 12 minute decrease in the day. Negative. All throughout January, July, negative. All July, August, negative. All July, September, negative. All throughout October, negative. All throughout November, negative. All throughout, what, almost through, up until you get to out the 23rd or 24th of December, you'll see the sunrise sunset chart positive. A positive 40 something seconds. That's the birth of the sun. It's math and science, my brothers and sisters. So something new does occur. The sun is reborn. And now, after, now this is what? There's seven, look at it. Every seven days, there's a 10 to 12 minute increase in the day. Go to the stone. Do not say Abdullah Bey said anything. Don't say Abdullah Bey said anything. Go to the finding of facts, the sunrise and sunset chart, and see it for yourself. There's seven days, there's seven days, there's not seven days in a week. I mean, this is my last point. There are not seven days in a week. Man, why did Monty, why did the Mafi bring this fool on? He's saying that there's not seven, there's no seven days. There's not seven days in a week. There's seven days a week in the lunar calendar. See, that's different. He's being semantic. No, no, I'm not. I identify the lunar calendar. I said, when well, you said seven days in a week, you're being general. There's seven days in a week in the lunar calendar. Where you get that from, Abdullah? I count it. You don't have to say Abdullah said. Count. Count between each moon phase. You don't see the new moon. When you first see the moon, you see the crescent, the first quarter. So you count from the new moon to the first quarter, seven days. From the first quarter moon to the new moon, seven days. From the new moon from the, from the, to the full moon, seven days. From the full moon to the last quarter moon, seven days. It's counting. It's counting. I've done it. Observe and count seven days. There's seven days a week in a, in a lunar calendar, not seven days in a week. Wow. I'm not playing semantical games. I identify, you got identify the calendar. There's seven days of the week in the lunar calendar. So I just wanted to drop that on y'all to just to orientate you to the math and science. Islam, it's a question to uh Yunus Bay. He said, Is there a new site for the uh, Academy of Providence? I'm not sure. You want to elaborate on that? Um, well, we have the, uh, the we have the uh, YouTube, the Moroccan Post Media YouTube. We got a lot of good stuff on there. The Moroccan Post Media YouTube page. So we have we don't we don't have that site anymore, but we'll have a we'll have a we'll we'll have a new uh, website pretty soon. Uh, by the spring, we'll have another website up. But right now, we have the YouTube and a lot of videos, classes on there. Uh, we have an upcoming paid course, a uh, twelve week trust. Trust and contract your legal safeguard course. That's going to be $300 starting on every going to be on Saturdays, uh, starting uh, on March 8th from 2 to 5 Eastern Standard Time. So it's a $300. That's a paid course for 12, 12 or 12 weeks. But the, the courses that are on the classes that are on the Moroccan Post, put that in the chat. Uh, that's uh, my series Moroccan Post Media YouTube page. That's those are free. And of course, you got me for my books. Go to moresandmaystreet.org for the Venus book, How Moon, uh, the Masonic Compass Square, Masonic, uh, uh, and the Connection and Measurement of Timekeeping, Moors and Mastery Part One, Moors and Mastery Part Two, uh, the Illuminati and Illumination of the Mind, Etymology and Vocabulary, and Etymology and Vocabulary Supplementary One. You go to moresandmaystreet.org. So I just wanted to, so since you asked me that I had something, you know, I'm on here, I do want to. You know, share what I do know. I want to share what I do have with our people. So, in the opportunity I get chance to share, I'm going to do it. I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, that was that was good. That was good stuff, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, man. So I'm I'm just gonna close out with a 
with a chapter of the Silent Brotherhood of the East and um and close out the meeting, man. This was a good this is a good presentation today. Uh, I'll send everybody the recording as well. I'm glad Brother Hassan came on here and did a demonstration. That was uh his inaugural. So that was that was beautiful. Um, so once again, I'm gonna close out here with the Silent Brotherhood of the East. Uh, we are now on chapter 11. <clears throat> Yahshua reveals the marriage law in a wife from Allah. Yahshua reveals the marriage law of man and a wife from Allah. The law forbids adultery, but in the eyes of the law, adultery is an overt act. The satisfaction of the sensuous self outside of the marriage bonds. Now, marriage in the sight of the law is but a promise made by man and woman by the sanction of the priest to live together unto death. No priest or officer has the power from Allah to bind two souls in wedding and wedded love. What is a marriage tie? It is not what the priest may say or do. There is but one true marriage and Allah alone can perform this marriage. It is the love of Allah that finds its way into the two, man and woman's hearts. And that is all ever to be. Your priest cannot cause this to be. It is the promise of the two that they will love each other into death. Is love a passion that is subject to the will of man? Can man pick up his love as he would a gem and lay it down or give it out to anyone? Can love be bought and sold? Like sheep, love is the power of Allah that binds two souls and makes them one. There is no power on earth that can dissolve this bond. The bodies may be forced apart by man or death for just a little time, but they will meet again. Now, in the bond of Allah, we find the marriage tie. All other unions are but bonds of straw, and they who live in them commit adultery. But more than this, the man or woman who indulges lustful thoughts commits adultery. Whom Allah has joined together, man cannot part. Whom man has joined together, lie in sin. Connotatively. So, lo, I say that he who in the heart desires to possess that which is not his own is a thief in the sight of Allah. The things which men see not with eyes of flesh of more worth than things that man can see. The good name is worth a thousand times a mine of gold. And he who says a word or does a deed that injures or defames that name is a thief. Upon the table of the law we read, thou shalt not covet anything. To covet is all is an all-consuming wish to have anything that is not right for anyone to have. And such wish in the spirit of the law is theft. So, moral to the story. No man can put a man and woman together. That's more of a cosmic connection. And it's more of a, it's a feeling and an action. You know, it starts off as being inspired and next it comes actions, you know, doing life together, showing and proving that there's love there. It doesn't take a priest to do that. Moral to the story. Another moral to the story. Adultery. Once you find that somebody. Now we're talking about discipline, discipline yourself to cultivate that. Jai Bay, peace and love. Um, <clears throat> so that pretty much is a demonstration for today. Um, any thoughts, statements, comments, questions here? If not, I'm going to close out in prayer. Yeah. You got something? Yeah, brother Mafia. If you ever get a chance, yeah, I just wanted to say real quick. Um, if you ever get a oh. chance, can I get a copy of the recordings? Oh yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I'm a uh, yeah. Give me this evening. It's going. I'm gonna record it and then uh, upload yeah. it and send it to YouTube. Then I'm gonna send it to you. 
Okay, mm-hmm. cool. That brother that was dropping that earlier on the nutrition, yeah, let that brother know I appreciated his knowledge. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Um, okay, so let me just close out in prayer here. So Allah, the Father of the universe, Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day. It was Holy Prophet, Nobu Ali. Amen. So that, that officially closes out the meeting. Uh, I wanted to kind of see where everybody's at here.